talking about the inception of Russian school of piano playing, we are mostly referring to the second half of 19th century, when the close proximity of Russia in relation to Europe allowed European musicians to visit Russia with concerts and stay there to teach by the invitation of emperor. This way, such a wonderful musicians like Ferruccio Busoni, Theodor Lyshetitsky, John Field, Franz Liszt, started to share their knowledge with talented pianists of Imperial Russia. The talented pianists raised another generation of illustrious musicians, and this continuity remains up to today. In Russian piano pedagogy of 20th century, we can trace two branches. One was established by the founder of Leningrad School of Piano Playing, Leonid Nikolaev, and another one was established in Moscow by Konstantin Gum. Despite the division into two schools, they have common features. They can be united into a general concept of Russian School of Piano Playing. I myself was lucky enough to be taught by the best representatives of both schools. Both of my teachers in Moscow, Maria Gambarian and Emmanuel Monazon, were students of Konstantin Gumnov, and world-renowned professor, pianist Vitaly Margulis, who was my teacher during my master's and doctoral degree at UCLA, was taught by Savshinsky, whose teacher was Nikolaev himself. The most important feature of Russian school of piano playing, I would consider sound mastery the beautiful quality of the sound that specifically Russian pianists are capable of producing became kind of a business card in the musical world. The distinguishing feature by which Russian pianists are immediately recognized in the international piano competitions or concerts, recordings. And it's not just a national feature, it's the way that musicians are trained since childhood. So besides universal standards, such as deep connection with the music on emotional level, technical freedom and clarity, sound mastery I would consider the most important feature of Russian School of Piano Playing.